What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so here's the situation we have for you, ladies and gentlemen. A lot is continuing to go on. Tropical Storm Harold formed and made landfall on Padre Island, Texas earlier this morning. We have Tropical Storm Franklin that is continuing to be a bit of a disorganized mess. We have post-tropical cyclone Gert right here. We have two new er other areas of interest, one of the, which is the remnants of Tropical Storm Emily, and another one has been showing some signs of disorganization over the last few hours or so. So all of this we're going to cover real quickly, as well as some more potential de development as the Central American gyre is starting to show its, uh, its curse. So here's what we have going on. Here's the latest from Tropical Storm Herald right here. Here's the public advisory. Currently 45 mile per hour winds. It's been moving inland over South Texas. Made landfall as a 50 mile per hour tropical storm. A pretty organized system as well as it made landfall on, on Padre Island, Texas. And it's supposed to move inland, cause some significant flooding over here. We have Tropical Storm Franklin, no really change in strength or anything like that. We've just been keeping a close eye on it. It remains a 50 mile per hour tr uh, tropical storm. It looks like a disorganized mess on satellite. Hurricane hunters are currently in Franklin right now, but it still has time to get its act together before it hits the Dominican Republic, potentially get up to a strong tropical storm. But by after it gets to the Dominican Republic, that's where things get interesting. As if we go ahead and show you the latest from the cone, it does have it strengthening up into a hurricane and starting to move more towards the uh, towards the north northwest. Maybe uh, maybe down the road, potentially some U.S. impacts near North Carolina. We're not 100 percent sure, but interestingly, it is expected to move at a very slow pace right here as the steering currents start to weaken considerably. And Franklin really has nowhere to go, so it could use all the, this warm water out here and low wind shear to potentially reorganize and restrengthen as time continues to go on. The entire Dominican Republic is under a tropical storm warning. The southern half of Haiti is under a tropical storm warning. The Turks and Caicos are still under a, tro a tropical storm watch right now. The main threat is going to be a flooding threat for the Dominican Republic and Haiti and maybe the Turks and Caicos. We have post-tropical cyclone Gert. I'm not really too interested in that. And then we have 92L that is continuing to show some signs of disorganization. A tropical depression could form later this week or over the, uh, or this uh, the weekend while it moves west northwestward across the eastern and central uh, tropical Atlantic. Things are getting pretty interesting right here. If this does develop, I've been looking at stuff down the road. This could potentially become one of those Cape Verde systems that may show some life as time continues to go move through, go on and move through the central Atlantic basin right here. But that's what we have going on right now. We have a lot of activity right here. It's pretty active right here. We have four, we have got four named systems in 24 hours. Emily is already gone. Franklin's heading to the DR. Gert's a post tropical cyclone. Harold's in Texas. So we're gonna have to monitor it still. However, I've been looking at some more runs down the road. Uh, the European, the CMC, the Icon are all showing po uh, possible scenarios of a potential Florida Panhandle landfall from the Central American Gyre over here. So here's the situation. Starting about three to four days out, the European has a ha, basically has a low pressure system starting to organize and, and approach the Yucatan Peninsula. It is expected to make landfall and pretty much stay over the Yucatan, potentially bringing some significant flooding before moving into the Gulf of Mexico and starting to rapidly organize and rapidly strengthen as it is on that loop on the loop current. On the, in the Gulf of Mexico, where there's 31, potentially 32 plus degrees Celsius temperatures. OHC is well over 150 in a lot of those areas. So definitely a lot of fuel for this system as time continues to go on. And then the European actually has this thing making landfall at around a Category 2 hurricane with winds of uh, with pressure of 976 millibars. We're going to go ahead and show you the 850 millibar height and wind with this. Yeah, it's it's a little lopsided right here. If we go ahead and show you the shear around this time right here, there is a bit there is a bit of shear uh, towards the west of it, but this is mainly inflow and outflow and all that stuff. But interesting things are starting to go on. We'll pull up a sounding right here. Things. Yeah, 850, we're looking at 70 to 80 uh, uh, knot winds uh, uh, right there. That's at flight level for hurricane hunters. So we'll have to see how these winds play out, but the pressure definitely is indicative of a Category 2 hurricane. So that's what we have going on according to the European. Next one we're showing you is the CMC model, and that's also being pretty interesting right here. Here's the CMC. It has that gyre moving into the Atlantic, into the Caribbean, over the Yucatan. However, the CMC actually has this moving within 24 hours across the Gulf of Mexico. 
snow and making landfall as a strong tropical storm as it impacts Florida, Georgia, and the Carolinas, and that's about 10 days out. And then the Icon run similarly uh, similarly has a similar situation to the CMC, has this thing moving through the Yucatan Peninsula, it then enters the Gulf of Mexico, spends about two to three days there, starts to organize and strengthen up potentially to a strong tropical storm before it approaches Florida, but now it's too early out. The icon is also having Franklin strengthen to potentially up to a major hurricane, and maybe the outer bands could could impact the outer banks right there, but we'll have to pay attention to that as time continues to go on. We're still a long way to go away from hurricane season. We're going to go ahead and show you what's working for and against this potential development. Easily what's working for it, ocean heat content and very warm water. It's like I've been saying before, if this gyre moves through the Caribbean and then enters the Yucatan, it's moving through 28 to 30 degree uh, ocean heat, uh, warm water right here. And then it's, uh, it is going to be stalling over the Yucatan. But once it enters the Gulf, it's entering 30 to 31 degree Celsius waters all throughout there. And it's also going to be interacting with the loop current right there, which is seeing 150 plus ocean heat content across the region right there as it approaches the Florida uh, Peninsula right there and the Florida Panhandle as well. So that definitely could really strengthen it if it gets over uh, all that OHC right there. So that's what's working for it. What's working really against, uh, what could be working against it is the deep layer shear as we continue to look at it. The shear across the Gulf of Mexico right now is a little unfavorable after Tropical Storm Harold moved through it. However, we'll have to wait and see what happens as time continues to go on because this is expected to form in the next several days. We're going to go ahead and show you the shear and moisture forecast brought to you by the European run right here. Here's the shear forecast for the next five days right here. Here's the 48 hours out. You start to see that ridge and trough build up right here in the Gulf, starts to bring that shear more to the south in the Caribbean Sea right here. And you see that shear starting to potentially impact with Franklin right there, but we'll have to continue to monitor that. And then you have this thing starting to develop, and then this thing stays over the Gulf of Mexico for a few uh, for about two days before the wind shear actually calms down considerably according to the European and becomes mainly just outflow stuff right here according to what we are seeing. And this, it basically rides that all the way up, and it takes full advantage of this and strengthens potentially up to Category 2 strength right here, as we saw earlier. We're going to go ahead and also cross-check this with the moisture just to kind of get everything in place. So here's the moisture component to all of this. The moisture, as you can see, it gets pretty uh, moist in the, in the Gulf of Mexico, at least the southern half of the Gulf, before the tropical system moves through. There is some dry air that could impact it early on, but it, the moist air quickly wraps around it, and it's in a very very moist area all the way up until Flor uh, landfall in Florida right here. There is some dry air that could potentially enter the Gulf of Mexico, but it's up not really going to do much to this uh, hurricane by according to the European as this thing moves on. It's going to be mainly in the western Gulf and not really impact this whole situation we have right here. Last thing we're going to go ahead and show you is the ensemble, European ensembles, to kind of give you an understanding of what's going on. The ensembles of Franklin have this thing stalling and potentially developing into a strong tropical storm or hurricane in the next five days and then you have this uh, central american gyre potentially organizing and strengthening into that the ensembles are very all over the place some have it hitting texas others hit it, have it hitting louisiana and mississippi and others including the operation operational have it hitting the florida panhandle so this is certainly something we need to monitor as time continues to go on although the stronger scenarios i've noted are actually going to be impacting potentially louisiana so this is something we need to monitor as time continues to go on we're closing the video out right here. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps us out. helps us make more videos like these. The goal of this channel is to get more people engaged with weather. But with that being said, have a wonderful day, guys. Stay safe.